Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot. Mmh. Celui-ci, 4 cépages. Donc les mêmes que celui-ci, mais on a rajouté du petit verre d'eau. Et là, il y a du petit verre d'eau aussi. Mmh. 12 mois de barrique, fût de chêne, des euh, barrels. Celui-là, 6 mois. Celui-là, 3 mois. Ok mmh. On va commencer par celui-là et on va faire comme ça. Ok donc ça, c'est le troisième vin. C'est très... Euh, c'est pas très tannique, c'est beaucoup sur le fruit. Okay. Ça fait des de Oui. Donc là, Merlot, Cabernet, jeune vigne euh, et six mois d'élevage.
to know that at this time, uh, most of the chateau, the main creation was not the vineyard. It was farm, you know, with coals, with the wheat and uh, everything. Uh, it's just the 100% the vineyard started uh, around the 60s, the 70s. So it's quite recent uh, if you compare the history of what Effectively, some chateaux started in the uh, 14th or 15th or 16th century, but uh, most of the chateaux started at the 18th and 19th century. Mm -hmm. And step by step, uh, with the, the commercial activity around the wine business, uh, more and more chateaux expanding uh, the vineyard. So today, the situation is like you know, uh, so it's the biggest area in the world for uh, AC appellation, uh, the most important uh, vineyard uh, because we have something like 52 uh, different appellations in Bordeaux, so it represents uh, more than 110,000 hectares, uh, so that means it's uh, more or less 600 million bottles per year. So it's a big measure. Um, so Bordeaux, um, you know, you know about Bordeaux. So Bordeaux, you could divide Bordeaux in three, four main areas: uh, the right bank, Spomoros and Mio and so on, uh, the club area, and the grab also on the both sides of the Garonne River. Uh, so it's South Bordeaux. Uh, direction to choose, and uh, the biggest appellation, the biggest area is uh, Entre le Mer and the Bordeaux Bordeaux Superior. It's the biggest. It's starting from uh, between the Dordogne River and the Garonne River, and expanding a little bit on the other side of the Garonne. That's called the Bourg Bordeaux. The Medoc area uh, started from Bordeaux to the north, and the north is not so far from there. Um, you have uh, seven different small appellation, so we, we call this communal. So it's Arc Maurice, Maro, Saint Julien, Poyac, Saint Estelle, and more you know global uh, denomination. On the north is Medoc, on the south is Old Medoc. Inside Bordeaux, you have a class, uh, you have different also organization: the Cru Classé, the Grand Cru Classé, as you know. The Cru Bourgeois, the Cru Artisan, and the other one. Uh, Saint Estef, where we are located, uh, is appellation is something like more than 1,200 acres uh, totally. And divided by, and we have in this appellation different, uh, the different level, Grand Cru Classé. Uh, we have uh, five Grand Cru Classé in Saint Estef. So you have Côte d'Estonel, La Font Rocher, Côte d'Abori, Calon Ségur, and the other one is missing one. Moros, yes, most famous. Uh, and also quite a few uh, Cru Bourgeois, and Château de saint et Cru Bourgeois. So you have, with the new classification, the Cru Bourgeois Supérieur and Cru Bourgeois uh, Classic. Uh, I decided to just propose the Chateau de saint -Fort to be just a classic to represent the Chateau de saint -Fort. normally for the next uh, revision, it would be in 2025, and we were going to, you know, to be classified normally to the Bordeaux Superior. So, yes, but not in the of the stuff. Uh, just one, sorry, just one, one. But the, it was before, a few exceptions. But when in, 20, in, 20, uh, in 2003... Yeah, because when I had some older models at home, and that's it, there was so many... Like Omar um, um, Musée. Omar uh, Musée, uh, Canon Ségur, Salon Ségur, mm -hmm. uh, Fion, and Omar uh, Musée. It's been uh, exceptional. Mm -hmm. But they decided to, uh, to say, oh, bye-bye, bonsoir. Because it was uh, 
in 2003 classification was quite less, with many, many problems and many oppositions. So we decided to just have just one, only one level. So these guys decided to, okay, they decided I'm going to quit. And they decided to, to, to go away. And to, they don't, in, you know, in fact, they didn't need the classification or the name of Obama, the name of the name of of Finansegur is enough. They don't they have the network and the distribution so there's no need any, any uh, you know, uh, they don't need any any anything. So today uh, you you're right but today they decided it since twenty twenty classification to give back uh, to this old system although exceptional criminal system um, Tour Saint Fort uh, we are located on the southwest of the Appalachian South uh, uh, This map is very important and very interesting I'm going to give you more global, there is no specifically on dedicated on yeah, it's all in English. It's all uh, we sold, it, we, we, we call this in French gravure. Uh, so it's a uh, uh, and if you bring to look at that side, the wall was in fact part of this building. Mm -hmm. And this building is still existing. No, it's not anymore a wine cellar. It's just a technical uh, building mm -hmm. for the churches. And, uh, and the house disappeared, in fact, it had been destroyed. Mm, what I heard, it was by fire. Fire and it had been destroyed. It was just... We don't know exactly, but some people told me that it around the, during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know exactly the reason mm -hmm. for that. But and beside these uh, main buildings for Chateau Pinot, you know, existed the farm, and we are in the farm. You are right now in this part of the building, mm -hmm. and this picture. Uh, the date of this picture is in 1985. So, you have to know that Tour Saint Fort had been created, created in 1992. So we have only 30 years. That's why the chateau is completely unknown for many, many, many people. And if you look at attentively around the chateau, on the suburb of the chateau, you have nothing, no vines. Mm -hmm. So that means all the vines have been planted in 1902, 91. Mm -hmm. So all the vines, the mellow there, the Cabernet Sauvignon, this mellow, have been planted in 92. So 30 years old. And the former owner, uh, Monsieur Lafort, decided to transform these buildings in, in a wine cellar, in a chateau. Uh, a winery. Mm -hmm. So he, clear, he decided to transform the, arch the general architecture. And when we took over the chateau and when we buy it, we bought the chateau in 2016. We built the towers and we refurbished all the other buildings. But before, in 16, there were, there were <coughs> sorry, there was nothing inside mm -hmm. on the, in this so we decided to move all the technical part, the building the the, the the cellar in the middle of this courtyard mm -hmm. to have more space and to be able to uh, have more different vats to be able to make a better selections and a better plot selections so the plot selections uh, we started with uh, a very specific study about the soil and the subsoil around the chateau. So I decided to make this study. Mm -hmm. 
to know exactly what is going on and uh, how it fits and uh, so that's why I know exactly what is the subsoil of the shadow and the subsoil is really the limestone and the limestone in different part of the shadow the limestone is only 60 centimeters from the surface mm -hmm. and on the other side is only 80 centimeters so we are really really close to the limestone it could be an advantage specifically this year because the limestone and we have and the fact that we are on the lower level of the Appalachian, so we are going to collect all the waters from the e different hills around. Mm -hmm. And that means we, we suffered about the lack of water this year, mm -hmm. but less than the other one. So it could be this terroir was since the 90s to the the, the, you know, beginning of 2000, 2005, 2008 was a very, very difficult time for the vineyard. But maybe with the climate changes, maybe this terror could be a, a, an opportunity for us. So, so since we 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 took over the shadow, we decided to move the quality to something a little bit more decent and to have a better level of